This is Fat Man, a code name for the second and the last nuclear weapon ever used in the war. The bomb ended the World War II, killing almost 40,000 people. This was one of the two nuclear bombs exploded over Japan. The world witnessed destructive and devastating power of the nuclear weapon. In this video, I will take you on a detailed tour of the inside of the plutonium implosion bomb. We will talk about the science and engineering behind the weapon and the series of events that happened before the bomb exploded. Have you ever played the game of Jenga? Let's say you keep on putting the blocks one over the other. More the blocks you put, more unstable it becomes. If the height of the stock is too high, then a slight force will collapse the entire structure. Similarly, more number of protons and neutrons in the atom, more unstable it becomes. All the elements heavier than lead are usually unstable. They decay eventually and convert into lead to lower their internal energy. Some of the materials and their isotopes like uranium-235 and plutonium-239 are called fissile materials because their atoms can be split. In case of plutonium, if it is supplied with a small energy by colliding with free neutron, already unstable nucleus of the plutonium atom completely splits into two smaller atoms, xenon and zirconium. This is called nuclear fission. This fission or splitting of the plutonium atom will also release three more neutrons. These neutrons, if they collide with another plutonium atoms, they also split them and the reaction continues. At room temperature and standard conditions, plutonium sphere is kept subcritical. But to make it sustain a chain reaction and release tremendous amount of destructive energy, the plutonium sphere must be at critical mass. Critical mass is the smallest amount of fissile material needed for sustained nuclear chain reaction. One of the ways to make it critical from subcritical is to compress it and increase its density by two and a half times. At normal densities, due to the large spaces between atoms, the neutron released from the fission reaction will lose its energy before reaching another atom and the chain reaction will not sustain. But if the density of the plutonium is increased by more than two times, and if we release the neutron, this time due to smaller gaps, the chain reaction will sustain. In Fat Man, the amount of plutonium used was 6.19 kilograms. To make it critical, the sphere had to be compressed to increase its density. This is not an easy task. The pressure required to do so is about 300,000 atmospheres. It is equivalent to a pressure exerted by 500,000 elephants. Not only that, the pressure applied should be symmetrical to compress the sphere symmetrically. And though it is impossible to arrange 500,000 elephants, it can be done by arranging explosives around the sphere and detonating it simultaneously. But there is a problem. The explosion wave or the detonation wave is spherical. If these spherical waves hit the plutonium sphere, the compression will not be symmetrical. To make the compression symmetrical, the chemical compositions of the explosive materials is modified. Instead of a single material, the explosives are made with different layers of fast and slow explosives. This changes the curvature of diverging detonation wave to converging wave. This is called the explosive lens. The explosive lens when detonated, it increases the density of the plutonium sphere by two and a half times by compressing it. This state of the plutonium sphere is supercritical. 
At the same time, a radioactive element called polonium-210 releases alpha radiation, which in turn absorbed by the element called beryllium. Then the beryllium emits neutron. If a free neutron emitted by beryllium is injected in the supercritical sphere of plutonium, at this point, a chain reaction will occur and spontaneous energy will be released. Its length is 3.3 meters and has a diameter of 1.5 meters. It weighs about 4.6 tons. Let's open the coverings to see what's inside. Let's start with the core of the assembly. This is called the internal neutron initiator or urchin. It is responsible for emitting neutrons required for the chain reaction. Inside there is a beryllium pallet and also a beryllium shell. The beryllium shell has spikes pointed inwards. Between the beryllium pallet and beryllium shell there is polonium. This substance is radioactive and emits alpha particles. The whole neutron generator assembly is 2 cm in diameter. Let's see what is surrounding the neutron generator. There is a main fission material of the atomic weapon, a 6.19 kg plutonium sphere. It is 9.2 cm in diameter. The plutonium sphere is enclosed inside another concentric sphere of uranium-238. This sphere of uranium acts as a neutron reflector, which reflects the emitted neutrons back in the plutonium sphere and increases the fission efficiency. It also partly takes part in the fission reaction. On the uranium sphere, there is a thin layer of boron plastic shell. This is the shell of acrylic thermoplastic with enriched boron. It absorbs the slow-moving neutrons and avoids pre-detonation. Everything that is responsible for the fission reaction is enclosed in a thick layer of aluminium. This is called an aluminium pusher, which transfers the shock waves from the explosives to the uranium uniformly. The pusher sphere of aluminium is enclosed by 32 blocks of faster explosives. The faster explosive is a combination of 60% RDX and 40% TNT. Outside of this, there is another layer of 32 explosive blocks. These blocks are made using combination of fast and slow explosives to shape the detonation wave, so it is called an explosive lens. To detonate each of the explosive block, a detonator was inserted inside it. The whole assembly is called the physics package. There is a thick steel case surrounding this physics package to contain the explosion of fast and slow explosives inside before the actual fission reaction. Simultaneous explosions of all the explosive blocks was crucial for the symmetric explosion. This is X unit. This was the electronic component with capacitors and was responsible to produce high current at high voltage and to distribute it to all the 32 detonators at the same time. Wires with thick insulation carried this current from the X unit to all the detonators. All the sensors, timers and radar controllers are mounted on this plate and on the other side there are batteries which supply power to the X unit and all the sensors. Everything was placed inside the outermost shell of the bomb. This shell had radars to measure the distance of the bomb from the ground. This structure at the tail of the bomb is called California Parachute. This is to stabilize the structure in the air after its deployment. 9th August 1945 The fat man was lifted and fitted in the belly of the bombing plane named Boxcar. This was the American Boeing B-29. This was the only aircraft capable of flying with Fat Man. In fact, 
the dimensions of the bomb were restricted by the available space inside the plane. The plane took off from the Tinian Air Base exactly at 2.47 am. It was a 5-hour flight to the primary target, the city of Kokura in Japan. But on that day, it was obscured by the clouds. The pilot was unable to get a clear visuals. So the plane proceeded to the alternative target of Nagasaki. Here the sky was somewhat clear and the fat man was dropped. As soon as the bomb dropped, a timer inside it started. As the timer counted 15 seconds, the bomb had fallen far away from the plane. After 15 seconds, the barometric sensors and the radar system were enabled. This was done to prevent any interference of the aeroplane's radio signals with the radar system. After another 28 seconds, the radar recorded a distance of 500 meters and the firing circuit closed. The X unit on the side of the bomb discharged. It sent high current at 5000 volts to the detonators. Outering of the 32 explosive blocks detonated. They further detonated the inside ring of 32 detonators, creating a concave shock wave with a pressure over 300,000 atmospheres. This intense pressure was then transferred to the uranium and plutonium spheres by the aluminium pusher. This reduced the volume of plutonium sphere and increased the density by two and a half times. At this time, the plutonium core became super critical. This pressure also crushed the gold-plated beryllium neutron generator. The spikes went through the polonium layer into the pallet. This mixed the polonium and beryllium together. The alpha radiation emitted by radioactive polonium was absorbed by the beryllium. After absorbing the alpha radiation, beryllium then emitted free neutrons. These free neutrons were enough to start a chain reaction inside the supercritical plutonium. The sustained fission reaction started inside the 6 kg plutonium sphere and within a millionth of a second, 88 terabyte or 24.5 gigawatt hour equivalent energy released in the form of explosion and heat. This tremendous energy created a huge fireball of temperatures more than 4000 degrees Celsius, created powerful shock waves with velocities over 1000 km per hour, and a huge burst of gamma radiation. 40,000 people were killed, and another 20 to 30,000 people died later from blast and burn injuries and long term health effects. Nuclear weapons are deadly. Richard Feynman received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965. He helped develop the first atomic bomb. In his book, The Meaning of It All, he writes, Is science of any value? I think a power to do something is of value. Whether the result is a good thing or a bad thing depends on how it is used. But the power is a value. He further writes, To every man is given the key to the gates of heaven. The same key opens the gates of hell.